Can you social engineer your target into plugging in a USB drive? How about distracting them for the briefest of moments? As we saw recently on Mr. Robot, 15 seconds of physical access and a USB rubber ducky is all it takes to swipe passwords from an unattended PC. In honor of this appearance, we are covering 15 second password hacks, Mr. Robot style, pilfering passwords with the USB rubber ducky. Hello, Hello, everyone, welcome and welcome to this episode. That's my, I do that part. <laughs> Who runs the show? I do. It's my show. I run this show. It's hey, everyone, show. welcome to this episode of Hack 5. This is your weekly dose of techno loss. My name is Shannon Morris. I'm her co host, Darren Kitchen. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, Shannon. <laughs> it's a very exciting week for us. It is. You know why? Yes, I do, because it's written right there. It says that we did a cameo on Mr. Robot. <laughs> <laughs> we did. So <laughs> Hack5 had a cameo on Mr. Robot recently with the appearance of our USB rubber ducky, which was super, super cool. They even like called out by name rubber duck. Right? How exciting. exciting is that? In fact, I actually, I have it right here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Because this is fair use, right? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it's fair use. Yeah, so it's like, hey. This is a rubber ducky. All else fails. You find an FBI laptop anywhere on the floor. They're usually Panasonic tough books. Plug this guy in. Wait 15 seconds, then yank it, okay? Thanks to a tool called Mimikatz, it'll pull all cache passwords and domain info in and save them on this. So, so awesome! Right? We're not gonna get a takedown for that. No, I don't think so. In fact, I mean, if they did, I would say like, in really... honor of this appearance, we're going to go ahead and recreate this Hollywood hack by showing how easy it is to deploy malware and exfiltrate data with the USB rubber ducky. Yeah. This yes, because so that was really cool that they just they cool. showed off a real hack. It, it was a real hack. So the payload that was mentioned on the show is called the Twin Duck Mimi Cats that was shown off by us in season 15, episode 3. Uh, so check that episode out for the technique. It saves the passwords back to the duck. We'll put the link in the show notes, and I believe we can stick like a card thing over here. Yeah, so I'll right? put a card up there. <laughs> Nice. So uh, if you're new to this and you haven't been following along for a while, the USB rubber ducky is the first keystroke injection attack tool. It's this little guy. We invented this in 2010. Yay. It looks like a USB drive. It smells like a USB drive. Did you really just sniff it? it? I did, yeah, because it. I don't bite them like you. Oh, uh, does it taste like a USB drive? Oh. Anyway, it types like a keyboard, though. It types it over a th uh, thousand It actually does not taste very good. Want to try the PCB instead? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually what's inside <laughs> it. It's not a regular thumb drive. It's a keyboard. It's a keyboard emulator. So it types over a thousand words per minute and it types these specially crafted payloads for the duck, which basically mimic the user entering these keystrokes into the computer at superhuman speeds. And that means that anybody with social engineering or physical access skills can go ahead and deploy these duck payloads as long as you can find like a free moment with their target's computer. Which we all know plenty of those happen. Oh, yes. In fact, if you'll come to Pen Test with Hack 5, Shenanigans is all I'm going to say. <laughs> Whatever, Brenda. Right? Okay. <laughs> so on. basically, it's a tool that violates the inherent trust that computers have in humans. Since we as humans primarily communicate with keyboards using, or with computers using keyboards and sometimes computer mouses. Uh, so in essence, computers trust the USB rubber ducky because they just think, oh, it's a keyboard. Right. I mean, cool. it's, I mean, I guess technically it's, it's a hid attack. It's, an atta uh, it's a yeah. violation of the human interface device specification, which includes keyboards, mice, joysticks, things of that nature. And we're just emulating those humans because if I had 30 minutes with your computer, yeah, I could totally own it, but I don't have 30 minutes. Right. I've got 30 seconds while I distract you. So I've pre-programmed the while attack. While you're getting something out of the printer. Mm -hmm. right? So we're actually going to take this a step further because we've already covered the method that they used on the show or mentioned on the show that Mimic Hats that saves it back to the disc. That's this one on episode uh, season 15, episode 3, so highly recommend check that out. But instead, we're going to be using a variant. Mm. So the variant is called? Uh, the variant, okay, so it's a variant on Mimic Hats, okay. which if you're not familiar, it's by Gentle Kiwi, and it's a tool that dumps clear text credentials out of memory from Windows, uh, wow. as opposed to the older technique, which I believe we've even covered in like back in season five where you would dump hashes and then crack those hashes. So NTLM and LM hashes and then run cracking tools. With this, uh, Gentle Kiwi's tool Mimikatz just pulls the actual plain text 
password right out of memory, so you don't even need to crack the hashes, although it also gives you the hashes and all these other awesome credentials. So it's a, it's a fantastic tool. It's the, so the full name is Invoke Mimikatz. That's the variant by, uh, by uh, 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 Climber. Cli oh. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's in lead speak. <laughs> and that I Invoke Mimikatz variant is one written in PowerShell, which goes oh, ahead and in PowerShell. It, well, which is fantastic because okay. that's like been built into Windows since Windows 7. And it injects Mimikatz directly into memory. So it never oh. touches the disk, which means that there's nothing for like antivirus to like find a file on the computer. Anyway, so what really these cool. are doing is they're going directly to the RAM, to your memory, mm -hmm. and messing around with RAM. So it, they don't even touch any files with like saved passwords or anything like that. It's just the passwords that are saved on your RAM. Exactly. That's so cool. And you've further altered a method by our friend Mubix as well. So Mubix does Metasploit Minute. He sent us this cool alteration to pull the script from a web server using PowerShell too. Right. So when we're done with this, we've made a little alteration. And basically, when this is done, when we're ready to deploy this, what, what it's going to do is this payload will go ahead and open an admin command prompt bypassing okay. UAC. We're going to do a little obfuscation. We're yes. going to download and execute invoke Mimikatz uh, into memory. We're going to go ahead and run that, getting those clear text passwords. Then we're going to send those passwords back up to our own server up in the cloud so we can store them for later enjoyment. And when it's all said and done, you're basically just going to have a USB drive that you can plug into any computer and in 15 seconds own so it. So cool. <laughs> this is going to be fun. And luckily, this does not take that many things. So what you'll need to pull off this attack are, of course, any web server on the internet with PHP, and preferably something mostly anonymous. It won't be on this segment. <laughs> the USB rubber ducky. Of course, the uh, Ducky script payload, invoke Mimikatz PowerShell file, and credential saving PHP scripts. And all of those we are going to be showing off today. And everything we've luckily covered in a very nicely documented blog article posted by Darren yeah. over at hak5.org. So you can read along with this as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So let's go ahead and begin with step one, which is writing the payload. So uh, we should probably talk about uh, how Ducky payloads are put together. And I'm going to switch over to my, um, my Kali machine so we can kind of get into that. Uh, so essentially, the USB rubber Ducky scripts are written in what I like to call a Ducky script. It's a very simple, it's ridiculously simple, the scripting language that can be written in any regular text editor, whether it's Notepad or Vi or Emacs. Which is or actually VI. No, by it's, way. it's VI. Well, or it's Vim. But no, it's VI. Is it like, VI? That's how it's pronounced. The original creator said it as VI, not Vi. I learn something new every day. I love five. it when I can teach Darren Kitchen things. Well, I'm going to use Nano because I like Nano so much <laughs> that I named a pineapple after it. <laughs> anyway, any text editor. And I'm going to go ahead and break down this script into okay. five different sections. The very first being, to cool your jets, okay. right? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is start with a little rem. And rem is short for remark, and this comes from basic. In other programming languages, you may have like two slashes or a semicolon or things of that nature. And really all I want to do here is just kind of give it a title and an author and, hey, give mad props to the shoulders of the giants yeah. of the people who which we are standing upon. That sentence made sense to me. <laughs> um, but essentially, the most important part at this very beginning stage is to do a delay 1000. And what that means is we're going to just Chill out for 1,000 milliseconds. And that's one second, right? Obviously. And that just means that we're going to give the computer that we're plugging our duck into like one second to like be like, oh, a keyboard and like, right. you know, enumerate that. And that's because like computers are sometimes slow. You never know, right? Yeah, I mean, if you, you never just, know. If you just plug in and immediately start sending keystrokes within the first like millisecond, it, it'll be like, oh, a keyboard. And then you've already typed like a a whole sentence. So yeah. yeah, you just don't want to miss it. Okay. And and of course, like if you're hacking a 486, you're gonna put in some more delays. You still use a 486? Uh, you know, um, my my boy Strong Bad does, because he's all chucking the email. Apparently, I used to use one when I was like a little little kid. Right. Like just banging on the keyboard. I don't know what I'm doing. You know. Uh, you know what? I'm thinking. A child. I'm thinking a lappy 386. Yeah. Scroll button on the laptop to get our last. How you learn okay, to so scroll so fast? Do next? I'm what sorry. Do next? I just now <laughs> I want to stop watching. Stop watching this. Go watch Strong Bad. Come back. Okay. Step two. What we're <laughs> going to do is we're going to open an admin command prompt. So that's what this section here is. So basically, GUI R is the equivalent of Windows key R. Okay. And then we're going to type this PowerShell here. So that's what string means. String means go ahead and type this. Let me put this in my clipboard. Then we're going to hit Enter followed by Alt Y. So let's go ahead and do this in this Windows VM to 
to Wonders. check that out. So every window, every version of Windows since Windows 95, Windows key R will pull up this little run line. And you'll actually notice I already have that in there because it was the last command written. But I'll go ahead and, well, I'll grab it from the history. There we go. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to pull this up and type this PowerShell. Okay. So what it's doing is it's doing a start process. What process are we starting? CMD. Okay, that's the command prompt. Well, this verb, run as, what run as means is run as administrator. So when we oh. hit OK, we're going to be prompted by UAC, which means, oh no, it's thwarted our ability to become the administrator, except for the fact that if you hold down Alt, now notice this, notice uh, by Y and N. Those weren't there a second ago. Here, let me, let me uh, say no and, and restart this so you can see. So, see how it's underlined? Yeah. The y. So if you can you hold just down, press Y. Yeah, if you hold down Alt and hit Y, that's what it's going to do without you having to click. So I just hit Alt Y, and there we are. Yes. We have an administration command prompt. Awesome. Right? Okay. And so voila, we have our command prompt. Everything is good to go. Okay, so now that we have that up and running and open, um, it's going to be kind of obvious, like when I walk back to my computer after getting something off the printer, that somebody's been messing with my computer. Right. I mean, normies are not used to seeing terminals open. That's right? scary hacker green, stuff. Green text so. is going to freak them out. Yeah. Actually, uh, oh, I don't, I don't remember the, uh, I'll, I'll show you as a tip next week on how to get that. But, uh, what, so, green text? <laughs> to be a real hacker, anyway. Control of T? <laughs> um, <laughs> Pretty much, you'll see, you'll see. So <laughs> what we're going to want to do in this case is a little bit of obfuscation of the command prompt because while it's not always necessary, it is nice to kind of like obscure the fact that you're doing all this hacker good stuff oh, and yeah. bring as little attention to this as possible. And depending on your scenario, it may or may not be uh, necessary, but let's just go ahead and get into some of the techniques. So this next obfuscation technique here is we're going to type in mode and then here, let me just pop that in my clipboard. <clears throat> so this command here, mode con calls equals 18, lines equals 1, is telling this command prompt to go ahead and become 18 columns by one line. Boom. Oh, okay. Ridiculously small. So it's making it small. Cool. Right. The next one is to type in color space capital F capital E. And that makes the background white and the foreground <laughs> yellow. <laughs> which is ridiculously hard to oh, see. Oh, so it looks like a browser window. The idea here is we're just going to try to make it as tiny as possible and white and kind of <laughs> just blend in with the other stuff on the screens. Gotcha. Thankfully, this payload is so extremely short that it'll only be open for the briefest amount of time anyway. <laughs> okay, so at this point, we are ready to actually download and to execute the payload. We're not messing with colors anymore. Right, so let's go ahead and get into that. The next part down here is uh, this PowerShell. So let's go ahead and take a look at this PowerShell. So it's actually just this one string and it's kind of long. And to make this easier, I'm actually going to go ahead and open another command prompt. But this one, I'm not going to obfuscate because I want you to be able to see this and I'll kind of dissect this PowerShell. Okay. So this command right here, obviously PowerShell means, hey, command prompt, go ahead and execute this with PowerShell. The IEX part right here, uh, basically means invoke expression. That's a directive that tells ah. it to execute everything following this rather than just echoing it back to the command line. Then we have a new dash object. That command let creates an instance of the Microsoft.NET framework, and then we're going to use net.webclient. Net.webclient is basically, it's a class that allows us to send and receive data from standard web servers. Okay. So after that, we'll do a download string. So this right here, download string, and then- I'm assuming that downloads something. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and- uh, Derp, derp. Derp, derp. And what we do is we just pass it a URL. It's a method that downloads this resource, and we specify, in my case, I'm specifying uh, HTTP colon slash slash darren.kitchen slash creds slash IM for invoke mimicats dot PS1 for PowerShell. Um, and there you go. And so what this is, the next part right here, it's uh, setting a variable dollar sign output. And it's saying invoke mimicats with the dump creds uh, directive. Okay. Okay. Then what's going to happen here is the resulting passwords are actually going to be stored in that dollar sign output uh, variable. So then finally, we're going to follow this up. Notice we have like a semicolon here. So we're starting a new command. 
and that's going to be new object just like before, net web client just like before, and this time instead of download string, we're using upload string. Upload string is a method that takes two different uh, parameters. The first one is a URL, so in this case, http colon slash slash darren.kitchen, that, that would be your website, not mine, mm -hmm. slash creds slash rx.php. That's a PHP script that I have up there waiting for this, and what are we going to pass it? dollar sign output. Oh. So as long as we have that rx.php file living in the cloud waiting for this, it's going to be passed as a HTTP post, as a just standard you know, web post over to this PHP script, and then you'll see that we're going to save it, and then for our later viewing pleasure. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, I, I want you to understand that in this example, I'm using Darren.Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Be sure to change that to match your own URL. Maybe you want to make it a little less obvious who totally owned their <laughs> network, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, like, if you care. <laughs> Rad. Okay, so now that Mimi Cats has run, won't anybody that's using the commuter, computer next notice that something suspicious is going on? Because they're going to see those PowerShell commands in the history Absolutely. if they're smart enough, right? Absolutely. Go, let, here, let me go ahead and get this running. So I'll just execute that and you'll see it's just executing in the background and it'll be done in just a second. But okay. uh, but to what you said, if I pull up that run line again, Windows key You're R, you'll see, see it. Yeah. exactly. So we probably want to clear our tracks. And since CMD, this, uh, this command prompt here, doesn't natively maintain a persistent command history like you do in Linux. Uh, everything oh, typed so into the... Oh, so it's not like the terminal. No, it's not like the Linux terminal. Hmm. If only Windows had Bash, that would be weird. We'd right. be living in some <laughs> alternate universe and nobody would believe that for a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still bitter. Um, everything typed into the command prompt is gone after we run the exit command. So funny. <laughs> right? So this run dialog, though, uh, as well as many others, it maintains the command history, and those are stored in the registry. Uh -huh. So as you can see, this, this command finished, right, this PowerShell, and I'll show you the results of that here in a second. But let's go ahead and do say we do exit, and that's what we would have done in our obfuscated command prompt, though you just can't see it on TV. Um, to get rid of this, what we're going to do is we're going to use another piece of PowerShell. So if I come down here, after that, the last part of our duck script is to run this PowerShell command right here. So if we pull that command prompt back up and go ahead and paste that PowerShell command, like I said, what this is doing is it's using the remove item commandlet, this remove dash item property, and we just go ahead and pass it a path. In this case, it's the path to a Windows registry item. And then the next thing we'll say is the name. So this tack name here, and we're using asterisk or star. That's a wild card. Wild cards, yay. Yay, and that's basically saying delete all of the items in there, uh, especially that item run MRU. So if you open up this, uh, this in registry editor, you're going to see that it basically maintains the history in there, and this is just going to clear the whole thing out. So let's go ahead and okay. just execute this. Boop. And now when I hit Windows key R, you'll notice that Nothing there are... Nothing is there. Nope. Cool. It's all cleared out. Okay. So, so is there anything else to it? I mean, yeah, we have to encode it, we have to plug it into the duck, we have to set up but our that's server. that's it for the ducky script. That's it for the ducky script. Wow. Okay, so this payload is going to be available on the forums, and we are also going to link it from your article as well on hack5.org. I'm assuming that we're going to need to set up some server-side stuff also to make this obviously work. So let's go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll get back into that when we get back. When you've got that great idea like owning a computer in 15 seconds or less, you know that you need to bring it to the interweb and share it with the world. So please do what Shannon and I do and that's head over to domain.com. These guys have an awesome domain discovery system that will help you choose the right domain and their easy checkout process will have your website up and online in no time flat. And get this, the guys over at domain.com, huge fans of Hack5 and you guys, so we have a special coupon code just for you. It's H-A-K-5, that spells Hack5 and it'll also save you 20% at checkout. So check that out, isn't that awesome? Guys at domain.com are huge fans and we want to show them support. So even if you don't need a domain this exact moment, you should tweet them at domain.com and say, hey, thanks for supporting Hack5 all these years. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Now that the Mimikatz Ducky script has been set up and it's pointing over at our web server URL, we are going to need to encode the payload and then set up the server itself. Right, which means the USB rubber ducky, which is expecting, in fact, here it is, uh, this little guy is in expecting not that uh, not that text file that we wrote, but rather a file called inject.bin on the root of its micro SD card. There's a little um, SD card guy that just 
goes in here, which means that you can carry around multiple payloads by just uh, carrying around multiple inexpensive micro SD cards. Fantastic. Anyway, this uh, inject.bin file that it's expecting on the root of the micro SD card is basically the binary equivalent of that ducky script text file that we wrote previously in Nano, or you could do it in VI. Or so we're going to have to convert it. Yeah, we need to go ahead and convert that. And so to do that, we use the duck encoder. So let me go ahead and show you the, what that looks like. Duck encode. Duck encode. So I have it right here. And you'll see if I uh, ls, I've got my uh, invoke mimicats.txt. That's my payload. And then I've got my duck encode.jar, which is a Java duck encoder. Coder. So we'll do Java tack jar uh, duck encode.jar, tack i for the input file, which is invoke mimicats.txt, and then tack o inject.bin. Right, So that will be the output file. So I run that. Now if I ls again, you'll see that I have an inject.bin file. Yay. So all I have to do is put that on the root of the micro SD card. So let me go ahead and pop that SD card in the reader. Do you have it. to name it inject? Yes, you do. OK. So I've gone ahead and plugged the card reader into the computer. I can see I have a new volume. I can open it up with files and see there's already an inject.bin file there, which I'm just going to go ahead and delete. Or I'm going to rename it as my backup. In backup to bin because I may use that one later. Uh, and so all I have to do is now move that inject.bin over to, in this case, it's uh, right there. That's the directory of my, um, of my SD card reader. Mm -hmm. And now I'll eject it because it's important to safely inject these <laughs> SD cards. Yes, it is. Which I have now done with the eject command. There we go. So at this point, I can just go ahead and take the SD card out of the uh, computer or out, out of the reader, pop it into my duck here, bloop, okay. bloop, and I can just go ahead and plug it into the computers that I'd like to target. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure anybody that owns a ducky already knows how to do that. Well, sure, but if you're new to it, <laughs> I'm just saying that's so how you encode. What about it. the server? Set up the server, man. All right, all right, all right. We're so going to need to host a copy of Mimikatz and then provide a place to save the passwords back to the web, aren't we? Yes, we okay. are. And so show to, me how to right, do this Okay, thing. well, I'll show you how to do this <laughs> thing. All right, fine. So there's a little <laughs> PHP script that I use. Here, let me uh, go over here. I'm on this computer, Andy. And let me oh, ls. What a cute name. Yeah. And uh, I've got a bunch of cred files already on here. But let me go ahead and show you. So basically, what I'd use is this tiny PHP script. Let me uh, go ahead and open it up in nano. And it's called rx.php for receive. And this is it. It's just a little two-liner. Basically, I create a variable called file. And uh, I don't know. I'm just going to call the file whatever the remote address is. So this uh, okay. dollar underscore server remote address, that gets the IP address of the remote host. So I know who I owned. And then I'll you know, add, add an underscore just to make it pretty, and then a date. And so this date is the year, month, the day, and then the hours and minutes and seconds. Okay. And then I'll name it, uh, I'll give it a dot creds, because you know, whatever. In fact, I could make that like dot cred with a Z to be all elite and stuff. Uh, but really, the majority of it is when this file is hit, it'll do a file put contents, which takes you know, whatever the input is and puts it into a file. What file? Well, that file that I just specified, which in this case is the IP address of the remote host with the date stamp. So it'll always get a unique file name. And so what file contents will it get? Well, it's going to get those file contents using this function here, file get contents, from this special PHP directive called PHP input. And so what that means is it's just going to take the raw input of whatever it's receiving. In this case, it's a post. Uh, and it's just going to take that raw post data and now put it into that file. Mm, okay. You can see that there may be some inherent flaws with some of this stuff, but as long yeah. as you're protecting and obscuring and do what you will and comment below, so because but this works. Because of the, the nature of this, how you're transferring that information, I'm sure it goes without saying that HTTPS would probably be a preferred uh, protocol in this instance. Absolutely. Yeah. So check out our recent uh, Hack 5 episode. It's called about Let's Encrypt. It's an entire tutorial on setting up SSL on your web server for free. That makes it very, very easy. It's right. surprisingly easy. And lastly, in addition to the uh, rx.php script, which is going to receive that HTTP post, post data uh, from your target PC, you will, in fact, need to also host invoke mimicats that PowerShell script. So if I come back okay. over to here, and close out and not save an ls tech la so you can see all these files. Uh, we have this im for invoke mimicats.ps1 file. And that is the latest version. However, I'll just go ahead and point it out that if I let me grab uh, Ice Weasel here. If you go to raw 
dot github user content.com slash manifestation slash power exploit slash master slash exfiltration slash invoke mimicast.ps1 you will get the latest and this right here is the entire powershell script and what's really cool about this script i want to page down because i want to show off how cool this code is this is all powershell but check this out mimicast requires a couple of uh dll's and it requires a different one whether or not you're using a 64 or a 32 bit machine and what's so cool about this is this single PowerShell script is going to detect it. And you see all this? This is actually Ew. the DLL, I know. But it contains uh, both the 32 and 64-bit versions of these DLLs. So it's just, <laughs> I don't know. I just want to point this out. This is really cool stuff. That's uh, awesome. Yes. And actually, if, if, since I'm in uh, Ice Weasel right now, what I love about my really terrible technique of using, you know, uh, PHP input and just mm -hmm. saving it to a file, I can now just pull that up from any web browser like on my phone. Oh, cool. So once I've deployed this duck against a computer, mm -hmm. I can just go and check the website and see what the passwords are. So this is what it's going to look like because we've already run it against our Windows host. If I come over to slash creds on Darren.Kitchen, you'll notice that I have all these files. And the most recent one, August 24, 25th right here, the one that we just did a moment ago, is this is it. So here's the output, and check that out. Let me make this yes. as big as possible. Look at those lame Boom, passwords. Right there. That is the password, right? That is so yes, funny. it's lame password. I mean, we get the LM hash, we get the uh, NTLM hash, and all of that. But right there in plain text, we are now ready to just go ahead and log into this machine. How wow. exciting is that? So that's it. That's it. That's I mean, we, cool. can, we can go ahead and see it in action if you'd like. I'll just pop okay. back over to this Windows box, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in so you can see. Um, bloop, bloop. And actually, you, you see it's like doing its thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and so cool. show you, like hands off, right? So it's open the prompt. Now it's really small. Now it's typing into that. And in a moment, it's going to finish that command, and that will disappear. And then we are going to have our very own, uh, you know, dot creds file sitting on our web server. So. How cool is that? So great. Right? I love it. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to hear your feedback as well. Yeah, me too. So let us know in the comments. Let us know feedback at hack5.org what you guys think of this payload. I'd love to see other ways that it could be improved, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for making it even better. In fact, Mubix and I even talked about doing a staged version that would be even more silent. Yeah. So we might follow up on that. Of course, use this in a place where you are allowed to use it. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I think that goes without that saying. That does go without saying. Hack <laughs> responsibly, people. Come on. Hack responsibly. All right, so now that that is pretty much wrapped up, I think it's about time that we did a Technolus photo of the week, don't you? Absolutely. So I'm very fun. excited about this one. So every single week, we are asking, uh, what tickles your Technolus? You can tweet us, you can Instagram, you can face blurg it if you want to even though we really like Twitter, it's the easiest one. A hashtag hack5, that's H-A-K-5, for your chance to win some awesome gear from the Hack Shop. And today we are giving away a Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano complete with, of course, a sticker pack. Yes. And... Oh, that's right. The and the book Wi-Fi Pineappling. So cool. Right? So this is the the you know hundred and what are we up to now? 120 page guide on how to pineapple. And it's really fantastic. I can't wait for you guys to dig into this. It's my find, first time editing a book. Right? Your name's right there. It's Shannon Morse, editor. <laughs> fantastic. So if you find any grammatical errors, it's her fault. It's actually his <laughs> fault, and then I just missed it. <laughs> right? Okay, well, All there's right, that so too. <laughs> who's our winner? Our winner is, help Hello. me out with the name here because I just saw this on Instagram and El it was Kentaro. awesome. El Kentaro needed to be able to check his pineapple, his uh, Wi-Fi pineapple Tetra status from the backside of it. So he actually go, went ahead and uh, routed in fiber optic cables from these, oh. uh, from the light pipes there at the back of the unit, or from the front of the unit, all the way to the back. So you can see right there you've got your, uh, your amber, your blue, and your red LEDs. How cool is that? Oh, I love awesome. to see the mods. So uh, you've already got a wife of Pineapple Tetra, but now you also have the book and the Nano. So it completes <laughs> out the collection. How cool is that? So keep sending in your Technolus photos, and we'll be sure to share our favorites on the show. And who knows, you might win something special from the Hack Shop next week. Yes, and if you want to grab yourself a copy of that book, or the Wi-Fi Pineapple, or of course the USB rubber ducky so you can start owning Windows passwords in 15 seconds too, 
You can find all of our awesome gear over at hackshop.com. That's H-A-K-shop.com. And you guys support this show directly with that. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. You keep the lights on, guys. Mm. And you can also go to hak5.org. That is where you find all of the shows, all the links to everything that we're doing, including any meetups that we're planning to do in the future. We're also going to be hitting up DerbyCon this year, which I'm super excited about. I haven't been to that since like the first year that they did DerbyCon. Right? We've I'm got, so we've got so much coming up. We've got DerbyCon. Yeah. Uh, we, if you're we going have... to DerbyCon, you know, Yingling is great. Just FYI. She's going to hit you up for all the Yingling. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's also uh, uh, TorCon in San Diego coming up. Uh, I'm going to be with uh, with Sebastian and, uh, and uh, Digi Ninja, Robin Wood, doing some Robin's awesome stuff in Vienna. Too? No, 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 no. This is going to oh, be in Vienna, Vienna at DeepSec. What? So, yeah, we'll have all the details at hak5.org. That's also where you can find I the article if you Vienna. want all the show notes and on all the payloads and stuff that we talked about today. Uh, here they have sausages Sausage. there. What did, they have the waltz there. So, with that said, <laughs> I am going to waltz my way off this set, right? Oh my I gosh. Get, am I doing it right? And Remind the whole you guys, reason we stay on schedule here is because of me. That yes. guy, oh my gosh. What? <laughs> Come on, you want to waltz with me? No, right. no, with I that don't. That's it, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technologist. No, really. Come on. Come on. It's really no. simple. It's just, I, what? Get away no, from just, me. Come on. Get away from me. What? I am Captain Kirk. <laughs> yes, ready. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>